Hello, hello, and welcome back for a little transcendental transcendence as my team of terrible torturers gets ready to trespass the terrible tunnels of perfidious manner in Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, take that, Ralph Waldo Emerson. I'm onto your shit. I'm not inherently good at all, not even a little. I haven't been beaten down and broken by the oppressive milieu of a modern society. I'm just, uh, turns out, a murderous scumbag, Ralph. That's really what it boils down to. I'm a bad person. I'm not going to go out and build some shitty hut and live next to a pond for two years. Uh-uh. I'm going to sharpen up my knives and try and slake my thirst for blood because I've been damned from the start, Ralph. That's the way it is. The stain of original sin has forever tainted my soul, and no amount of natural living can, can redeem me. That's it. I'm, I'm gone. I'm like a Superman graphic novel that didn't suck. I'm irredeemable. Only the fleeting self-gratification of taking another's life can fill the empty, gnawing hole that uh, resides at the very core of my being. When I take a life, it's as if I can sense the rush of my victim's desire to live as their last breath rattles from their throat. And uh, it's really the only thing that makes me feel even slightly alive. So you know what? I'm taking Slade Wilson, Barbed Wire, Dazzler, and Rachel Roth, because why not? We're going down into the dungeon, we're going to get ourselves set up, and eventually... We're going to get my revenge. I'm going to get my revenge. The Cove denied me the right to watch Superman suffer and die. And I'm going to make them suffer in turn. Because, again, I'm irredeemable. All I can do is repay suffering with suffering. It's all I know. It's all I know. So here's our team. We're getting these guys up to rank four. Slade, you guys, did we take away your trinkets? I took away your trinkets. I'm not sure why I did that, but that's fine. Unequip them all, sort them by rarity, and we'll redo this shit one more time. So, old Slade Wilson, Mr. Deathstroke himself, what is it exactly that you've been rolling with? i It's been a couple days since I played Darkest Dungeon. I believe we gave you the Ancestor's Pen because it's awesome. And I want to say maybe the Ancestor's Candle? Possibly. Possibly not. Um, was it the Wounding Helmet? I'm thinking maybe it was the Wounding Helmet. Or, no, you know what? I bet it was the Brawler's Gloves. Was it the Brawler's Gloves? Ah, oh, man, they're real good. Minus three. You know what? I would rather... Yeah, it was the Brawler's Gloves. And then Barbara Kopetsky had the Wounding Helmet and I believe the Wolf's Tassel, if I recall correctly, is how we'd been wrong. Definitely wasn't Wilbur's Flag. Wolf's Tassel. Yep, that's exactly what it was. And for old Dazzler and Rachel Roth here, we've been going with nothing fancy at all. Just uh, tell them holy healing for each of them. Fortunately, you know, we've got plenty in store. So we don't really have to worry about running out anytime soon. Available now. You can get your, your buy it now price on the Tome of Holy Healing. It's only 97 cents on eBay. The buy it now is great because they got a shitload in stock. So we'll close our trinket inventory. We don't actually need to look at this. What we really need to do is just provision for a short dungeon. And we're doing a short dungeon specifically because we want to try and keep our stress as low as possible. Although theoretically there's a case to be made if we're trying to keep our stress low for actually doing a medium dungeon. Is there a medium dungeon available? You know what? Is there a medium dungeon available in the cove? There is. Gather three ancestors relics. That could take anywhere between... You know what? Nah, it's, it's nah, not worth it. I'm just going to do the short mission. I was thinking about doing the medium so we could try and camp and get you know all of our provision boosts. But if we need to rest in between missions, hey, it's fine. We'll just rest. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to take... Eh, 16 food seems reasonable. Let's grab uh, three shovels. One of everything else, you know what? We'll forsake the key because short missions don't typically have... There's no no secret room in a short mission, so let's just grab 12... Actually, 12 torches is probably too much. 10 torches? Yeah, it's fine. It's a short mission. Yes, it is the cove, but it's still a short mission, man. We shouldn't need all these provisions. Why are you guys loading them down? There is a case to be made for maybe have taken a lot of provisions because we did have the town event where provisions were half price. We could have paid wholesale prices, man. Why are you paying retail? What the hell is wrong with you? Don't you know that Quibbids has great deals available, Pete, right now? You could be saving so much cash on shovels, you won't even know what to do with it. You can't afford not to buy at these kind of prices. Earl Schreib will pay in any car for $49.95, too. Doesn't mean he does a good job. I'm always assuming Earl Shribe painted it with his vomit, because he always sounded a little bit drunk when he did those ads. I'm Earl Shribe. I'll paint any car for $29.95. Paint it with my own festering, gut-rotting liquor, because I've been drinking six and a half handles of bourbon this morning. I don't trust you, Earl Shribe. Painting my car. 
Picking up a little scouting, so it looks like we got a hallway battle. All right, what is our goal here? Explore 90% of rooms. Well, that means we can skip whatever that last room is. That'll be great. Simply must know what lies within. It's, it's a torch. There it is. Congratulations. Why not set flame to it? And then we'll continue on our merry way. Stress units gotta die. This is, uh, this is the important thing. If we could get out of here with, like, no stress on anybody but Rachel Roth, that would actually be acceptable. You know what? Throw the hook and pull it closer. That would be acceptable because one of these people is not going into our final fight down in the cove. One of these units is gonna be the little boy who stayed behind. Yeah, you can't push Slade Wilson. He's just not having any of your shit. Let's go. Oh, look at that! Allison Blair with the dope critical and the heal! And Deathstroke living up to his name, giving that man a deadly stroke. I guess we'll just... I mean, the only person that needs healed is Rachel Roth, and she can do that while doing damage. Ready for the old gods? Ready for the old gods? Okay. Robert Kopetsky doesn't give a single shit, and you're dead. All right. Good. A little bit of stress relief as well. So we actually made positive gains in the stress department on that. That's, yeah, you know, that stress is paying out with, like, interest coming back in compound interest Pete it all rolls back you gotta you gotta think about the long con man don't think about the immediate payout think about the long game but I would love to be able to get through this dungeon with like a minimum of stress so that we don't have to rest we could if we wanted to but we wouldn't feel compelled to we're taking an arbalest into this mission so one of you guys well except for you bounty hunters one of you vestals which I guess mean I should say one of you ladies is expendable that's right. I don't care if you even die. Rachel Roth, as long as everybody else gets through this mission and manages to level up, I will sacrifice you and sell every gallon of your blood, if that's what it takes. I'll take you down to the plasma center and you let you donate until you just expire. Be like, huh, you know, I'm sorry she's dead, but hey, I needed the 67 bucks I got for 85 pints of plasma. If she had semen, I'd be selling that too. I just, I really need the cash. We require only the strength to follow it. This is a good fight for this team. Okay, so lead off with the mark. Barbara Kopetsky winning the speed roll, which is how we have her engineered to do. And then Deathstroke. Not a super kill critical, but it was some solid damage output. 38 damage from a single hit is respectable. Taking the slice and dice, which was dodged beautifully, I might add. Little Reign of Whips. No problems here. As long as nobody gets criticaled, we're not really that worried about it. Although Reign of Whips is also a stress attack. So we're going to start dropping some bombs in the back row on Mr. Has a Gun and Shoots a Lot. Destroyed. Johnny Has a Gun and Shoots a Lot. It's like uh, Bob, but we had a baby eats a boy. We should probably group heal. Double critical group heal. The stress relief is real. Okay, Kopetsky, ruin this man. doesn't dissuade the sharpened blade, this prodigious size of ours, but you know what? Prodigious size, I would say, is discouraging of the sharpened blade. If you got your choice of who you're going to run at with the knife, are you going to pick the biggest guy in the room or maybe a little guy who's sitting in the back of the corner reading a book, not bothering anybody? I don't know about you, but I'm going to probably go for the little guy. Seems like an easier victim. He won't even see us coming. He's so enraptured in that book, we could just run in and shank him right in the neck. You'll never notice. The prodigiously sized guy who's banging on the bar with a crowbar? Yeah, I don't want to try and stab that guy. He looks more ready for it. Just, I'm going to kill the reading guy, thank you. So, prodigious stars. Eh, you know what, Wayne June? I'm calling you. I'm calling bullshit on your whole analogy there. I think prodigious size does dissuade the sharpened blade. It doesn't say, pro, you didn't say prevents the sharpened blade, Wayne I'm getting in a semantic argument with the fucking narrator. As the light gains purchase. This is actually a really bad fight for us. This Ukka Crusher here. This guy is a problem because he has massive bleed attacks, and if he stacks enough of them on one target, we're going to find ourselves in a hurt locker very quickly. I'm hoping Deathstroke can pull off some kind of miracle stroke here. Also, this uh, Shocker really needs to die. I don't need either of my healers stunned, especially if it comes down to them needing to heal in order to save a life. The yeah, Arterial Pinch is exactly what we're worried about. It's a huge bleed, and we're getting hit with Brine too. Delightful. A disease out of that? No disease. This, that's what we needed. There's Barbara Kopetsky coming through in the clutch with a big old 35 damage wallop. Little shocker. Not a problem. There's no such thing as a true shocker. 
Beautiful criticals. We're getting really good crit rolls in this one. I mean, normally I complain because they go the other way, but this time, the criticals are flowing fast and furious in our favor. Normally you're saying, Pete, there's nothing favorable about the Fast and Furious. It's just a bad action movie with insultingly stupid physics and a lot of gratuitous explosions because, you know, Michael Bay. Typically I'd say you're not wrong, but in this case I feel the little Fast and Furious action is paying positive dividends in our direction. It's the first time for everything. Uh, let's go for the damage and the self-heal. You still got the self-heal, right? Good, because that bleed is still out there ticking. Um, I'm going to throw the key on the ground, actually. Even though I could have probably used it on this chest. It's encrusted with barnacles, but there's still booty inside. You know, if your booty is encrusted with barnacles, I really feel like maybe you should consult the services of a erstwhile physician. I mean, that just seems like a bad idea. But, ooh, my booty's encrusted with barnacles. You know what? You should go see somebody about a barnacle-encrusted booty. That's just good self-care. Like, how'd I get bar Also, how did you get barnacles on your ass? If barnacles are growing on your ass, you maybe need to get a more, more, uh, I don't know, uh, physically exertive hobby. If you're so sedentary that barnacles are growing on your ass, you maybe need to get out of the house once in a while. Crate contains stashed heirlooms. Stashed heirlooms are three deeds. This is an acceptable haul for us. We've got a shot at a little bit of stress relief, and we're going to give that to Slade Wilson because he can't fail. And reducing his stress by nine is a useful thing for us going into our final fight. I'm thinking maybe we go for the Drowned Crew. Maybe we can roll directly into it. As long as we don't get the holy living crap critical out of us, which admittedly is a bit of a risk, that dodge did not help. So we're going to eat a lot of attacks here, and these fishmen have a ridiculously high critical ratio. I'm guessing we're going to take probably one or two bad ones. Oh, none, none so far. We're holding up. Okay, we need to win some speed rolls here. Deathstroke, I needed you to live up to your name there, and you did not. Fortunately, Rachel Roth was there to clean up the mess, though. Okay, and I feel like maybe we need to start stacking as much damage into this back rank as we can, because a couple of our bounty hunters, by that I mean both of our bounty hunters, are going to have a difficult time cracking all the way back. Pull you forward, Deathstroke. There's what we wanted to see. There's my death stroke and four stress relief to boot. Just don't get critical. To a blow. Well, that's uh, exactly what I've needed you to not do. You know what? Fine. You fired back in kind. We traded stress for stress. It's acceptable. That's a fair trade. That's a fair. Also, this dude is probably dead. He's going to get one last desperate seaward slash off of Slade Wilson. And then I'm guessing that he oh, double seaward slash, huh? Well, he's not going down easy. Guy's putting up a fight. Say what you want. Beautiful. He's done now. All right. As victories mount, so what do we want to keep? What do we want to take? What do we want to keep? Well, this anti-venom's going on four. These bandages are also going on a four. I'm going to take those busts and this book. The key is probably overall more useful than two foods. So let's just snag that. Now, I need to continue adventuring, though, because I think this thing gives stress relief. 7, 18, and 1. So, Kopetsky, you would be the one who would want to touch this. I don't remember what we use on this. Is this holy water? No, holy water does nothing. Well, I don't want to put a torch on it, because I'm afraid that might... You know what? Just touch it. Great artifact. Inspires the hero! So, our chosen three have a total of eight aggregate stress, and that means the raven is going to probably get left behind. I guess we'll have to leave her never flitting, never flitting, still and sitting, perched upon a pallid bust of Pallas just outside Perfidious Manor. Perching and sitting, and nothing more. We did not exactly tear up the world in gold production, however. We got not even 10,000 in gold. Then again, it was a short quest, and it was medium level, and we could always sell that Book of Relaxation, although the Book of Relaxation I sort of like. I don't like the dodge penalty, but the stress thing relief is good and the accuracy is occasionally useful as well let's see what kind of debilitating quirks we got irrepressible which replaced night owl that's actually a straight up improvement for once kapetsky how'd you do uh wield tactician replaced early riser that's basically a wash guilty conscience replaced faithless neither one of those matters even a tiny bit and Rachel Roth, Love Interest replaced Bloodthirsty. Again, neither one of those is really relevant whatsoever. 
now it's time to go and uh, get all Buffy Summers up in this mug and start spending an absolute metric ton of cash. And when I say a metric ton of cash, I mean a literal metric ton of cash. We're going to take, like, you know, a giant cube, 1,000 kilograms worth of cash, and we're just going to set it on fire, effectively. Slade Wilson, let's get you all your level 5 skills, then. So we definitely want this. We definitely want that. You know what? I'm going to double up here. I don't like hook and slice, and I never use it. I'm not going to upgrade hook and slice. We're spending enough money as it is. Kapetsky... The same thing across the board for you, although I will take Flashbang because stuns are not terrible. Finish him, and the Flashbang is fine. Dazzler, let's get you coughed up here, and nothing fancy from the Dancy. We're just taking the skills we like. We might as well do Rachel Roth while we're here. We're ultimately going to want Rachel Roth getting back in the mix at some point, so there's no reason to not go ahead and max her skills. And now it's time to drop the actual crippling fortune worth of cash. It's here upgrading weapons and armor. Because this, this is the one that's really going to hurt us. Yep, this is, uh, I, I, felt, I feel a sincere pinch in my wallet there. We just blew like 50 grand in cash. It's a monument of fortune. But you know what? There's no, you can't put a price on vengeance. You can't put a price on on vengeance the unholy glee i'm gonna feel when this team sans rachel roth takes down the drowned crew oh it's gonna be a good day it's gonna be a good day and you know what we need to make sure catherine bishop is fully ready as well you have blind fire healing bandage sniper's mark and sniper shot all things that we would really like clear stun clear mark target now nah, we don't need any of that stuff so you're good there you have level five weapons and armor you absolutely do what we should take a look at, though, before we call this one a day, let's cover our camping skills and make sure we've got everything we want. We've got Encourage, which is good. Marching Plan, eh. Restring Crossbow, pretty good, actually. Pretty good, mostly for the bonus critical chance. Triage is respectable. We don't want any of these things. Okay, so Catherine Bishop is sorted. Let's take a look, then. That's Slade Wilson. You got, uh, okay, your camping skills are looking solid. And that you have almost all of them. You have everything, and eh, it's acceptable as well. Allison Blair, how you doing? You got Sanctuary, good. Okay, Chant, good, good. All right, these things are all... This is it. We're as ready as we can possibly be, which means next mission, we're going to delve the depths of the cove. Shouldn't I have said something that started with C, delve the depths of the cove? Shouldn't it have been like, cruise the caverns of the cove, Pete? You're always about the alliteration. Why did you fail there? Uh, you know, even the best of us has an off day sometimes. My alliteration matrix apparently was offline. Just like this episode's about to be offline. Sorry, I got distracted looking at Toad and wondering why he had so much stress. I was like, why does Toad have so much stress? Also, this is something we should consider fixing. Toad, do you need any touching up? Maybe a little stress relief, buddy? I do like Plague Doctors and wouldn't mind taking in a level 5 dungeon. Let's get Toad some stress relief. Why not? Off guard. Necromania. Is there anything you won't do? You will only gamble. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you want to go on a little gambling junket here, you know, head off to Caesars and see if maybe you can win back some of the fortune I just dropped. Because no matter what happens, win or lose, you can't waste any more cash than we did equipping this crew. It's going to be a tough road to hoe, but it'll be ultimately all worth it. Every single last nickel that we have just laid out of our wallet will come back to us tenfold when I get to see the drowned crew lying in ashes on the ground in the cove. But that'll wait till next time. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support does really mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see that vengeance and hear my unholy chuckling as I revel and bathe in the blood of my slain foes, might consider subscribing as well. Because like I said, Ralph Waldo, I'm irredeemable. I'm irredeemable. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.